Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andreu Porta Sanchez. I'm one of the cardiac electrophysiologists at uh, Hospital Clinic de Barcelona in Spain. I have uh, the pleasure of uh, uh, interviewing today uh, a good colleague, that is Serge Boveda. Please, Serge, if you uh, would like to introduce yourself. Hello, Andreu. Uh, hello, everybody here. Um, I am Serge Boveda. I am the co-head of the EP department of uh, Clinique Pasteur in Toulouse. I am, I am very happy to have this uh, discussion uh, with you, Andreu, about the PFA technology, if I understood well. Very good. Yeah, so the idea today was to have a conversation, a bit informal conversation between somebody that has been using RF for a long time, which would be me, and somebody that has been using uh, single shot devices and now has one of the largest experiences uh, in um, pulse field ablation for the treatment of atrial fibrillation. So, um, Serge, let me start by asking you if there is something different that you do with your patient in, in terms of uh, pre-procedural planning for uh, a PFA case. Is it something different uh, compared to radiofrequency or, or prior ablation? Not at all. Uh, PFA is like uh, cryo or radiofrequency. Um, the planning of, the, of the, the operation is exactly following the same uh, mode. Uh, we used to see the patients first in, uh, at consultation in order to uh, explain about the, the procedure, the success rates, the risk of complication eventually. And uh, then we use to send the patient to see the anesthesiologist because we are doing uh, our procedure under anesthesia. Uh, general anesthesia. So the patient in France needs to have a consultation with the anesthesiologist during the first month before ablation. And uh, then it depends if you're looking for an imaging or not, then uh, you can have uh, also an appointment for a CT scan or an MRI or a T, depends on what you're looking for. But again, nothing different uh, for PFA than for the other uh, type of uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And you mentioned the uh, use of general anesthesia. This is a limiting factor for many uh, centers performing AFib ablation. So is it a procedure that you always do under general anesthesia or is it something that can be done also without uh, the need of general anesthesia? Yes, I, I agree. This is a, a crucial point. And uh, to be completely transparent with you, uh, general anesthesia is a part of our workflow. Here in uh, Clinic Pasteur, we are performing all AFib ablation uh, under anesthesia, uh, whatever the, the technique is. Um, but I really believe that for a PFA, like for the other type of ablations, you can perform it under a deep sedation. Um, in fact, during PFA, there is only um, a short time where the patient is painful. This is when you are uh, delivering the PFA uh, applications uh, because it's uh, contracting the muscles. And uh, this is finally, if you are only uh, ablating the, the pulmonary veins, it lasts about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, during which you should give to the patient uh, like propofol in order to uh, really uh, keep it uh, in deep sedation. But this is feasible. No problem, I think. So it's, a short, it's a short period of time. Yeah. Okay, very good. And uh, do you, uh, uh, how many uh, venous access, something very practical, how many venous access do you need to still pace the uh, phrenic nerve when you uh, are doing the uh, PFA on the right-sided veins or is it, uh, is it needed? Uh, no, it's not needed. Maybe we will go uh, more in this detail uh, later, but uh, we use um, usually two uh, venous, uh, femoral venous puncher. Um, maybe we're thinking about only using one because after all, it's a single shot catheter. Uh, so you are just using it for performing uh, ablation, but also you can use it for um, assessing the PV potentials. And uh, it can be also used for uh, pacing. Uh, it can pace in a bipolar mode. Uh, there is no problem for that. Um, but we are, this is uh, again, a part of our workflow to use a second femoral uh, approach 
in order to uh, guide the transeptal puncture or uh, to pace in order to uh, be sure that we don't have a forfeit potentials or mm -hmm. in certain cases, it can be also helpful when you have a vagal reaction, you can mm -hmm. pace with this second catheter that you have already in place. So mm -hmm. this is something that is again optional, but I think that it can be helpful to have a second uh, venous approach. Quite useful, quite useful, I see. Very good. And um, do you, uh, how, how many applications of uh, PFA are needed uh, per vein? And, and uh, I think you mentioned having some imaging before the procedure and the, how do you integrate that? Uh, is it because you're using a mapping system or do you integrate that with your fluoroscopic system? How, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah, very, very good question. Very interesting. I think that um, first number of applications, uh, if we refer to uh, what is um, proposed by uh, uh, Farpulse and uh, now Boston Scientific, uh, we should give uh, eight application for each vein. This is the, what they called and that has been published like the Opti uh, wave uh, workflow. So you, you need really to uh, um, make uh, uh, four application in a basket uh, position of the, the catheter, a basket shape of the catheter, uh, four application and four application more for each vein in flower position. Uh, this is in order to increase the durability of the uh, lesion and the durability of the PV isolation. In fact, in our center, we have even increased a little bit this, um, this proposal by giving two more application in uh, the anterior aspect of the vein and two more application in the, the posterior aspect of the vein. So this is in total 12 application for each vein. But again, this can be also debated. Um, I think that uh, we are just at the beginning of the experience. Maybe uh, eight is more, is too much. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe 12 is uh, even not enough. We don't know. Okay. Uh, we are just at the beginning of the experience. And I think that this will certainly uh, evolve during a uh, time. And, uh, but this is what mm -hmm. we are doing today. And about the, the, the city integration, I, I think that this is a very important point. And maybe uh, we can see a few slides um, as perfect. an example mm -hmm. to show you how we are using the CT integration uh, in order to guide and to help for the uh, ablation uh, with PFA technique, like we, are, we were using also for cryo ablation, in fact. Um, Very if uh, Very good. you can see the slides here, I can. maybe the yes. first slide. Yes. yes. Just here an example to see uh, what is the, the kind of vision that you obtain after PFA application at the ostium of the four uh, pulmonary veins. This is the posterior view of the left atrium, and you can see on the right panel that you have a very um, antral scar, uh, very, um, let's say, uh, uh, fixed, and uh, uh, it seems a lot to the, the scar that you obtain with a cryo balloon. And uh, mm -hmm. my very first uh, uh, impression uh, when we did this, uh, this was one of the first patients that we performed in order to see what happened uh, with the lesions. And uh, this, is, this was my, my first feeling to, to say, mm -hmm. oh, it really looks like what we obtained with the cryo balloon. Do you always use a mapping system for these procedures or you don't need one? No, in fact, uh, another excellent question. We don't use it usually. We used during the first patients that we did in order to better understand what mm -hmm. we were doing and what we were obtaining and to assess the lesions that we were providing. But then we stopped. And I think that the mapping systems are also very important and we use always for the redo patients in order to see uh, if a vein has reconnected where it has reconnected, again, to better understand and to better focus the reablation of the redo patients. But on a general um, routine, we are not using uh, mapping systems for the PFA ablation. Okay, 
Very good. Yes, uh, this, this is, is about the city integration. Very nice. Exactly. This is just to explain you a little bit about the city integration. I feel it very useful in order to guide uh, the, the, the catheter at the, at the antrum of the vein. You can see here that the, the catheter is deployed in mm -hmm. a flower shape at the, at the antrum, at the ostium or the antrum of the left mm -hmm. superior pulmonary vein. You can see the guide wire that is entering the vein and uh, the catheter that is really very, very proximal. We use uh, the, the, the integration of the CT scan image um, as a routine for this mm -hmm. kind of procedures because uh, it's, uh, again, helpful to uh, navigate inside the left atrium, but also for teaching purposes. I think that for the fellows, it's also very interesting. And um, I have the feeling that they improve faster having this image integration because they better mm -hmm. understand the anatomy and they better understand where we are uh, applying uh, the, the catheter and the energy. Uh, the fusion is very easy to perform. You can see uh, above the left atrium, the, mm -hmm. the trachea, the carina uh, of, of, the, of the bronchia. And this is the landmark that we use in order to fix the image of the, of the heart. Uh, it takes a few seconds to do that. The nurses are integrating directly uh, the CT image from the system inside the workstation of the fluoro. Uh, it's, uh, it takes a few minutes and for the uh, fixing and integrating the image on the fluoro image, like I was explaining you, taking the landmark of the, the carina, the bronchia, it takes also a few seconds. So it's very mm -hmm. easy to do and I feel it's really useful. Okay, that's very nice. That's very nice. Well, I have another another uh, question. Do you think the uh, do you have any data that points to the duration of uh, the isolation? Uh, I mean, I've seen some of the cases, and it seems that all the veins are isolated very quickly. Is this a long lasting situation? Yes, uh, this is something that we have also uh, explored. Um, we have obtained until today uh, the, the isolation of the vein within the first application of PFA. Um, but it doesn't mean that this uh, isolation will be durable. And this is uh, the reason why I, I was speaking before about the uh, OptiWave protocol with uh, eight applications that you have to deliver uh, at the ostium of the vein, because even if you get the PV isolation with the first application, there is a question about the durability. And in the paper from Vivek Reddy that has been published in JAG, they observed that with only one application, they had around 50%, maybe 40% of reconnection of the vein when they were remapping the vein at two or three months. When they use eight application, this risk of reconnection of the vein decreases to less than 15%. So you have 85% of PV isolation durability at three months after remap of the vein when you are applying eight application at the ostium. But whatever, you are completely right. The, 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 the power of this energy is uh, so uh, impressive that with only one application, you can disconnect acutely the pulmonary vein, but it's not enough for the duration, That's amazing. the durability. That's amazing. Do you, uh, one last question that I wanted to ask you, um, uh, do, do you think it's uh, safer than our current procedures uh, compared to cryo and compared to radio frequency? Do you think it, this is uh, gonna be like a safer procedure? This is a great promise of this technology that it's extremely safe. And um, honestly, I, this is something that for me was really important at the beginning when I was reading the papers and when uh, they came with this uh, new uh, proposal for uh, performing a field ablation, I was interested because maybe first about the safety. And... Uh, uh, the good things, the, the, the beauty with uh, PFA is that it's directly uh, targeting the myocardial tissue. That means that you have, you are preventing, you are sparing the surrounding tissue like uh, esophagus, like phrenic nerve, and 
again, this is the, the, the promise that brings mm -hmm. this new approach, not only to be very effective, but also, and this is maybe even more important, to be extremely safe for the patient mm -hmm. because of the tissue selectivity. That's very important. That's wonderful. So I think, uh, I, I think we covered uh, quite a, a, a wide uh, range of, uh, of uh, topics. And uh, I think we can leave it here. It was uh, great to talk to you. Uh, your experience is so valuable for all of us. So now next thing is uh, for me to try and uh, use it, right? So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Serge. That, that was wonderful. I hope you, you will try it soon. And I, um, I promise you that you will be uh, impressed and uh, I believe uh, very interested by this, uh, this option and this opportunity. So thank you very much, Andrea. It, it was thank a you. real pleasure for me. Thank you. And uh, we thank the audience for the, uh, for the attention and uh, we close it here. Thank you very much. Thank you all. See you. Bye-bye.